Hello student, welcome to today's session of daily chemistry dose. So what is the dose for today? We shall be discussing one important topic of Oswald-Walker method which belongs to a chapter of solution in regard to relative lowering of vapor pressure. This is the experimental way of identifying relative lowering of vapor pressure. So some student got confused in this particular question. So I would suggest first you try it by pausing this video and thereafter see the discussion which I am going to do. So I hope you people have tried this question. Now let me explain first what exactly it is. Then we will take up the numerical part of this particular topic. So what exactly it is to be done in this particular case. The, the flow chart, the operators would look like something like this. From this side, you are going to pass dry air to a vessel containing solution. This solution is a solution containing this would have a non-volatile solute in it. Non-volatile solute is present in this solution. And the solution, of course, is of water in which this non-volatile solute is being put. Now, what would happen if that this dry air, when passes through this solution, would take along with it some amount of water or water vapors along with it. And then, thereafter, this solution, this air containing air got saturated with some amount of water then is passed through the pure solvent. Now along with this process what you are able to see is that once this has happened you would see that the weight of the solution vessels and the solvent vessel is going to decrease. There is loss in mass of the vessels containing these solution and solvent. And all of these water vapors then is being this air is being passed through a guard tubes containing anhydrous calcium chloride. Calcium chloride has a unique feature that it would absorb all the water vapors. As a consequence, whatever is the total loss in mass of uh, vessel in uh, containing solution as well as solvent, that much it would be the gain of these guard tubes because all of these water got absorbed and again the dry air goes out the way it came in. So this is the Prime FAC, this is the basic way of identifying what are the things there in this operators and what they are doing. So there is loss in mass of solution and solvent and there is gain of mass of the guard tubes. Now, before I go into the further details, let me place it some uh, thing, some important viewpoint here objectively that what is you can interpret here. So if the dry air is being passed through a pure solvent, say for example, there is a pure solvent and you are passing dry air through it. So obviously some water vapors would go out. Air got saturated with water vapors. As a consequence, there would be loss in mass air, loss in mass in this particular vessel. Now, if into this pure solvent, if I add sugar or salt or something like non uh, volatile solute into it, you would get a solution and it is a solution containing a non-volatile solute which would itself would not change into vapors, non-volatile solute at a given temperature. Now what would happen, same dry air when passed through this one, here the in, in, in the vessel B, the air do get saturated with water vapors but the amount with which it got saturated would be the lesser, would be lesser as compared to what it is doing in vessel A. Primarily because of the fact that why is it happening this way, it is because of this reason that the vapor pressure of solvent A would definitely be greater than B because it is pure solvent and the solution is containing a non-volatile solute. It is the reason for lesser saturation of air with water vapors when passed through a solution is because of the fact that the vapor pressure of the solution is lesser than that of pure solvent. And as a consequence, what you also would notice here that the loss in mass in A would be more as compared to B. So here, one thing is very clear to us that when a dry air is passed through any solution, if, if, if the loss in mass is more, we would say that the vapor pressure of that particular solution is high. And as a consequence of that, that solution is dilute. Dilute the solution is, diluter the solution is, more is its vapor pressure and more is the loss in mass when the dry air is being passed through it. So how this thing is going to be get applied on this particular operators, this analogy which I just have taken with, with you. And here one more thing I can place it here that uh, the maximum amount of vapors which can, maximum amount of vapors which a dry air can take along with it 
would be the one when it is passing through a pure solvent and that would cor correspond to p naught that loss in mass is directly proportional to p naught this you always have to remember that the maximum amount of uh, maximum amount of vapors which can be passed through this uh, dry air uh, taken along with the dry air is the case when it is being passed through a pure solvent and when it is being passed through a pure, uh, solution that value would always be less than that and the loss in mass the loss in mass loss in mass in that case can be directly proportional to ps now what does it mean let me explain it here now try to understand it now once you pass the dry air first from the solution what would happen is that the loss in mass in solution vessel would directly be proportional to ps i am saying the term proportionality that the loss in mass would not be that much when it would have passed through the pure solvent that loss in mass would be greater but since i am passing first through the solution so the loss in mass would directly be proportional to the vapor pressure of solution now the same same solution is being passed now through the solvent now obviously solvent if i would have passed this dry air through the pure solvent the loss in mass would have been directly proportional to p not because this is the maximum amount of vapors which can come along with it but as a matter of fact now the air is already being somewhat saturated with the vapors which it got from the solution as a result the mass loss in mass of solvent now solvent vessel would be directly proportional not would not be directly proportional to p not in fact it would be p not minus p s because some amount is already being there in the dry air because it is coming from the solution so this thing i think it is clear to you now lastly whatever is the loss whatever is the total loss that is being taken up by the guard tubes so that would correspond directly to p not now once you are able to understand these three lines only these are the three lines which are the basis of this particular topic now last line let me explain it once again that whatever solvent has came from solution as well as from the solvent all of that quantity has gone into the guard tubes and that what maximum quantity it can absorb is corresponding to p not because p not is the maximum amount of vapors which can come from these two compartments now once you get to know this the things are very easy p not minus ps upon p not is directly proportional to is equal to xb this is relative lowering of vapor pressure and which can be placed at like this nb upon na plus nd this is the formula now what is being given in the question in the question what is the data given that the pure uh, the dry air is passed through a solution containing 10 grams of solute and 90 grams of water okay and the loss in mass uh, loss in weight is 2.5 gram when it is passed through solution the loss in mass when passed through solution is 2.5 and 0 0.05 when it is passed through pure solvent now i have to simply place these values here so loss in mass of solvent when it is passed through the solvent is corresponding to this value when it is passed through the solvent so that is 0 0.05 and loss in what is being depicted by p naught p naught would be the total mass total loss in mass that is 2.5 plus 0 0.05 this is the total mass which can come out with the solution or with the solvent this is the maximum amount of vapors at a, that particular temperature can come out so now what is nb number of moles of solute was 10 and the molar mass we want to find out upon what was the quantity of water it was 90 and the molar mass is 18 and this is 10 upon m now once you happen to do the solving of this algebra you end up getting answer as 100 so that you can try it yourself so the answer to this question is 100 i think you have understood this session of mine and the query which is being generated by many students now would be very much clear so the fact of the matter is during Oswald Walker method you have to understand these three lines if you are able to understand these three lines we are through the question thanks a lot have a nice day stay safe and take good care of yourself